We will now talk about the Chochos, not the chocolate company. I mean, when this chocolate company came out, I got sent lots of pictures of them because everyone loved the fact that, you know, Chochos. So the Chochos are a tribe of degenerate humans which Lovecraft invented and mentioned in many of his stories. Now, the Chochos never appeared in person in his tales, but they were referenced as the Dread Chochos. Now, the Chochos are from Asia. They're usually described as dwarfed or otherwise small in stature. So here, I'm going to say I am aware that, in fact, a huge population of Asia are actually Caucasian. Namely, the people of Iran, India, Pakistan, and neighboring nations. The term Caucasian, by the way, has nothing to do with skin color. Racists might be surprised to learn that this man is Caucasian. But he is. I'm learning the word Asian here to refer to the people who mostly descend from Central Asian ancestors, like the majority populations of Siberia, Japan, China, Korea, Mongolia, Southeast Asia, and so forth. The Chochos are apparently of this root ethnicity. Now, as I said... Lovecraft said that the Chochos are dwarfed or stunted. I'm not sure if this is a reference to Asians in general being shorter than Caucasians, or if the Chochos are some kind of pygmy-like people. Not real pygmies who are less than five feet tall as adults, but clearly considered of small proportions by their neighbors. Lovecraft said the Chochos lived on the Plateau of Lang, which he placed more or less in Tibet, but he didn't really confirm it. At another time, Lovecraft put the Plateau of Lang in the Dreamlands and inhabited it with half-human monsters. Perhaps these horned, hooved horrors are the dream forms of Chochos? Anyway, other authors have occasionally referenced the Chochos as well, but they rarely appear physically in stories. One exception is Ted Klein's story, Black Man with a Horn, which I recommend, in which he says that a Chocho tribe lived in Vietnam, that they were indifferent Muslims, but weren't really accepted as good Muslims by their neighbors. Now, Klein brought the Chochos into the modern world with some terrifying force. But alas, even in Black Man with a Horn, the Chochos are only seen peripherally. Incidentally, the Black Man of the title is not a Chocho. The one Chocho seen by the protagonist of the story is an Asian man on an airplane, small in statue, who seems to be carrying a container of soup, but it's actually the birthing foam of some horrible monster because, you know, Chochos. Anyway, in brief, the Chochos worship foul gods, they practice torture, they cast evil curses, they interact with outsiders only to produce horror and destruction. They do not seem to be slaves to the horrific entities they worship, but rather are exploiting them for their own power. I'm sure the benefit goes both ways, though. Now, the Chochos are not technological. Their science and focus has gone a different direction. They are fo focused on biological and otherworldly science. They can produce cancerous tumors, plagues, interdimensional parasites. They can grow their own monsters from containers, you know. Now, the big difference between Chochos and other humans isn't really physical, even though they're described as, I mean, obviously other Asians look Asian. There can be short Asians, you know. But the big difference is mental. Fundamentally, Chochos don't think like other people. Now, we can't tell how much of this difference is from culture and upbringing and how much is genetic. It's also likely that the Chocho chromosomes have been warped by their interplay with the great old ones. The Chochos are known to be ruthless, heartless, cunning, and they don't really make decisions based on emotions, if they even have emotions beyond hatred and hellish glee at someone's misfortune. Now, the Chochos aren't warlock. They're not described as... A, as going into battle against their neighbors, although the neighbors fear them because they work by treachery, assassination, plague-spreading curses. When Chochos leave their native lands, they stick together in Chocho ghettos or neighborhoods. Now, the Chochos, this is all stuff we've gotten from a variety of sources. The Chocho apply their biological and arcane science to benefit their science, their society, by some really horrific ways. One of the most secret is that they biologically modify the head of a tribe to cause his literal head and brain to swell massively at the expense of the rest of his body. Thus, the leader has to be carried in a cub, in a, I mean a cub, a tub, or on a throne like Baron Moro. This gives them a super intelligent and calculating leadership who can also easily be controlled. They can also use their science, as you'd expect, to create sexually attractive women or youth to be used to seduce or influence rivals. And I'm sure you can think of other even more repulsive modifications that Chochos would find useful. Basically, the whole idea here is that the Chochos are all about body horror. Let's look at one example, the Akator. 
The Akator is specifically a hitman or an enforcer of the Chocho will. They are trained in the unique Chocho martial arts, which includes biting and gouging and so forth, but there's more. An Akator might have extra joints added to his limbs, or be able to twist his head 180 degrees around. This is taken advantage of in their martial arts. Now, Chocho bioscience and alchemy allow other modifications of Akators. An Akator may have venomous fangs, extra limbs hidden under loose clothing. He might be able to spit acid webs. Their martial arts style is based on assassination and stealth, not like straight up battle. Think of more like a ninja, like a really creepy ninja. They can hide for hours motionless to explode into action when the time is right. They can climb, they can disjoint shoulders and even hips to wiggle through crawl spaces and so forth. Now all the Akatoras have a technique where they'll take a small razor sharp blade, insert it under their skin and let the flesh heal over the wound. That means an Akator always has one or more hidden knives somewhere on their body. They just cut open, bite open the wound, slide it out, cut their bindings and escape. Now, Akators don't use like a punching, kicking kind of kung fu. They use a close-in wrestling sign style, like Brazilian jiu-jitsu or sambo. They rarely use other weapons than their body or a holdout blade. I mean, they might have a blowgun that shoot that squirts poison spiders or something, but they aren't really into swords and things. Other chochos might use those. Now, they strengthen their jaws for a more powerful bite, which they can use to grip an enemy while wrestling with them or just to cause injury. Typically, Akators have thick but mobile necks, bulging jaw muscles, often sharpened teeth, and Akators are often modified to be harder to grip in battle. Their bodies might be oiled or produce its own grease. Their ears are often amputated, as is in their nose. They may have the last joint in each finger removed to make finger punches more powerful, or instead they might grow out their fingernails, sharpening and hardening them or dipping them in poison. Now, the most dangerous Akators have their lips removed and their mouth widened to expose sharpened teeth. The jaw muscles are modified too. The result is a person with a shaved head, no ears, no nose, no lips. It looks more like an undead horror than a per living person, which actually is kind of nice nowadays because with COVID, the Akators can just put on a face mask, covers the nose, covers the mouth, and if they wear a, 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 a cap, it'll cover where they don't have ears. No one will know what they are. In my game Cthulhu Wars, I gave the Chocho faction the ancient being Ubo Sathla as the great old one. My logic was that Ubo Sathla is a mindless, mindless fungoid entity constantly growing in fecundity, spawning new life, and that would be really useful to the Chochos. And they'd prefer to have a god they can control, so Ubo Satha is more like a slave than a master to them. In the end, this is where we stand with the Chochos, a tribe of subhuman or perhaps superhuman beings, only superficially like us, eternally planning and plotting. The modern world is their prey. Though they have ancient roots, they adapt splendidly to our era. Their time of triumph is in the future. With modern communications and modern travel, the world is their oyster. Beware. Beware.